Hi guys, it's Matt from Maxon UK here and today we're going to be creating a flag in Cinema 4D. So there are a couple of ways of producing flags in Cinema 4D and I'm going to show you both of them. So to start with we are going to need to create something to have as our flag which is a plane. Okay, so that's going to act as our main flag. I'm just going to rotate that up. There we go, holding down shift to give my 90 degree increments and I'm going to make it just maybe a tad more flag shaped. Okay, so that gives us a fair amount of geometry there. Now, selecting the plane, I need to make the object editable. Okay, so I'm just going to press C on my keyboard and that means that my object is now made up of all of these points, polygons and lines. Okay, so this will give me my flag texture. Now, Flags are made of cloth and this is no different, so we are going to need to apply a cloth tag to this flag. So just going up to tags and then going down to simulations, I'm going to choose a cloth tag. Okay, clicking that and then if I press play, it falls to the ground. Okay, it shows that the tag is applied in one way, shape or form. But obviously we don't want it falling to the ground, we need it to stay relatively where it is. So using the points tool, okay, points mode that I've got on the left and my selection tool, I'm going to grab a couple of the points. So maybe just those six down there and those six there that act as anchor points as it were. So having selected those, I will then click my cloth tag. Okay. And under the dresser section, I have fixed points. So this fix points does exactly what that says, which is to fix the points where they are. So now if I play, you can see that the cloth of the tag itself sweeps around, but those points remain intact, okay? Which is kind of what I wanted to happen, um, but it's, it's swinging away more than I want at this point. Now, depending on what you want your flag to do, if you want it to sort of flop down like that, you'd need a flagpole. So I'm going to create the flagpole now. So going up to just create a simple cylinder, which I shall move into position. Okay, so I should just shrink a bit so it's a little bit more flagpole-y. There we go. Okay, that gives the uh, sort of impression that the flag itself is attached to something. There we go, and we get that crinkle. But the problem we have is that the flag goes straight through the flagpole. So the way to fix this is to have your cylinder selected, go up to your tags, and if we go to simulations, you can see that there is a cloth collider tag. This cloth collider means that it will act as something that cloth will collide with. So now if I press play, you can see that it bounces as opposed to goes through the cylinder itself. Okay, so that means that if the flag was to ever drop down, then it wouldn't go through the sort of mast as it were. But that isn't what I want my flag to do. I want my flag to blow in the wind at the moment. So to do that, I'm going to select my cloth tag over here, and I'm gonna to go to forces. And there are a plethora of different forces and different attributes that you can change for the forces depending on what you want it to do. So at the moment there is no wind direction and no wind strength. Okay, so I'm just going to zero out the wind strength with the Z axis as that's not the way that the flag is pointing. Flag is pointing in the same direction as this red arrow which means it's operating in the X axis. So I'm just going to increase that number to 10 and then I'm going to increase, increase my wind strength to 10 as well. Let's see what that does. So making sure I'm at the beginning of the animation and pressing play. Wow, okay, that's a little bit crazy. So I'm going to lower my wind strength then to five and the direction to five, okay. So we can see what that does. Okay, so that gives a little bit more of a flag sort of waving than we've got going on here. Um, I'm gonna lower my wind impact as well, so 50% and then I'm going to lower the lift just that little bit more, just to see what this does. Okay, so that means that the flag sort of drops down like there's a little bit of a breeze. Okay, maybe I'll increase the um, wind strength again back up. Let's say 10 again, and we can press play. Okay, 
maybe still a little bit strong again, but you can see that it starts to, to stay up in the wind. Um, the wind impact I'm going to increase to 75, so that means that the wind strength actually has an impact on the cloth rather than just falling down. Okay, so you, know, you can adjust these as you go and you can kind of see what happens and you know you may want to play around with the settings depending on exactly what it is that you want to do. So with the lowest, let's try 25. Wah! You can see that you can go totally crazy with it. So five again, 10 up there. Okay. You can change the air resistance and the wind drag. So if you lower that to zero, see it gets a bit floppier, you know, drag that up to 100. And you can see that it, it pulls it a lot more. So depending on the sort of pull that you want that, that flag to have, you can change that particular instance. I'm gonna just put that back down to say 15%. I don't want it to be totally swept away. So you can see that we've got this nice little waving flag here, but one of the problems we have is that it, it crinkles, and that's down to the number of polygons that are under this plane here. So one of the quickest way around is to add a subdivision surface, okay? And if I just drag and drop that subdivision surface, and you can see that we get a much smoother, more realistic looking flag there than we had before, okay? So I'm going to just go back to my plane and I'm going to just adjust some of these settings again so that I can get this sort of blowing in the wind a little bit more. Okay. So playing around with these settings just gives you that little bit more freedom and control depending on what it is that you are after. And that kind of gives you a nice realistic flag. If I was to increase the length of my animation, say to 200 frames, and then play this all the way through, we'd get a, a chance to really see what this flag looks like as it's continually blowing in the wind. And it's, you know, it's not bad, it's quite nice, it's quite realistic. It gives you a nice sort of flavour, it would look good on top of a castle or something like that. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is texture it. Um, at the moment we just have a blank cube, okay, and a blank pole there. So I already have a logo um, ready, ready to go in. So naturally I'll be using the Cinema 4D logo. Okay, so if I just uh, move my window out of the way, you can see I've got this logo here so to add it I'm just going to drag and drop it into my scene and click yes okay and that means that I now have the logo in my scene okay so if I just apply that straight on okay it stretches a little bit it's not exactly what I had in mind it's a little bit too uh, large so using my tag I'm just going to change my projection there to cubic okay and that gives me a nice look straight in the center and if I just untick tile, it will give me the single flag there. But if I render, I've got this nasty gray background. What I can do, just create a new material, make sure it's nice and bright and white. Okay. And then I will drag that on as well. Okay. I will drag that on to the plane. Now it overwrites it. Okay. And I just have a white plane. In order to adjust that, just go up to your materials tags that are on your object and just drag to reorder and that will give you a better sort of look now if I render now there you go you can see that we've got this nice flag there with the cinema 4d logo on a little bit reflective so I'm just going to select both of those go to the reflectance tab and I'm going to lower the width because I don't want them particularly shiny okay and that's not too bad so now if I go back and press play Okay, the logo stays exactly where it is. And the flag moves, whilst an interesting effect, not exactly what I was going for. Okay, to stick this, as it were, where it needs to be, you need to stick the texture. And in Cinema 4D, there is the aptly named stick texture tag. Okay, so under Cinema 4D, we have the stick texture. 
and if I click that, it will add the little stick texture tag. Now if I go back to the beginning and press play, okay, the flag stays where it is, okay, and the logo moves. Now if I render and have a look, you can see that it applies that logo really nicely, okay, to that flag. Okay, so that gives us a really nice flag animation, okay, of our Cinema 4D logo on the flag. But the next question is, what if I want the flag to move? So this is fine if your flag is on top of a castle and it's waving your Cinema 4D Maxon standard above it, but what if you wanted it to be a bit more like a race car flag, you know, a starting flag as it were? Then we are going to need to move this cylinder. Now, if I just press play, you'll be able to see that that cylinder has absolutely no bearing on its position. It will have an effect depending on whether or not it's going to touch the flag because it's set as a collider, but it doesn't move the flag like I would want it to. So making sure that I'm at the beginning of my animation. Simulations are a little bit sensitive and you always need to make sure that you go back to the beginning of an animation in order to check that your simulation is calculating com uh, properly. So I'm going to move my cylinder where I want it to act as a flag. And then on my plane that acts as my flag, I need to create another simulation tag, which is called a cloth belt. If I, and I click that, okay, and there we go. And I now have a cloth tag belt, cloth belt tag. Down the bottom of the tag, it says, what does it want to belt on to? And what I want it to do is to belt onto the cylinder. But first, I need to make it editable. So make the cylinder editable, then go back to my belt tag and drag and drop the cylinder into there. OK. Now if I press play and I move my cylinder, it still hasn't been attached. Because you see those points, they need to be told that that is what attaches to the cylinder. So once again, going back to the beginning of the animation, I'm just going to undo to put my cylinder back where it was. I am going to go to those points, go to points mode, go to the belt and click set. OK, and now if I press play and I move my cylinder, you can see that there is some form of impact. It certainly stretches stuff out of the way. The reason for this is the legacy, as it were, of the set points that I did for the flag before I used the belt. So going to the uh, cloth tab and then going to the dresser, I can clear those fixed points that were relating to just the plane on its own. And now it will be overridden and use the set points that are being done on the cloth tab. So now if I move that, and now if I move my cylinder, I get a sort of flag that I could wave, okay, wrapping itself around. You can see that the, the cloth simulation, as it were, on these things is actually really quite nice. So if I wanted to just, you know, maybe rotate it, okay, that gives me an attached flag to some form of pole, okay. It's a relatively quick tutorial there. Uh, I hope it will be useful for you. And the, different ways of being able to do flags in Cinema 4D. And I will see you next time.